This is the first video of the SAT Math Diagnostic Test Answer Explanations. In this video, we're going to go through numbers 1 through 10. So first, what is an integer? So this is just a, a definition and something you need to know for the SAT. Uh, an integer is basically any whole number that is positive, negative, or 0. Basically, you can't have no fraction or decimal. You can't have a decimal or a fraction. But any whole number, positive, negative, or zero works. Number two, an even number plus an odd number always equals n. So there's rules to remember, like even plus even is this, and odd times odd is this. If you forget those rules, you can just come up with an even and an odd and see what you get. So in this case, an even plus an odd. So six plus seven, well, that will always give us, in this case, 13, which is an odd number, and that's always going to be true, regardless of the of the numbers you actually pick. And how about this one, an even times an odd number, well, again, let's try six times seven, why not? Six times seven is 42, so here we see it always will give us an even number. So knowing those rules is good, but you can always recreate them. Name the first four consecutive positive even integers. Okay, so we want the first four consecutive, so in order, positive, so greater than zero, evens. So first, let's start out with the smallest positive even integer, and that will be two, which means the next must be four, six, and then eight. How about this one? Name the four largest consecutive negative odd integers. So you might get confused and say, well, largest, now wait a minute, how, you know, it can go infinitely large. Well, wait a minute, you gotta be careful with negatives, right? Negatives get larger as they get closer to zero. So in fact, the largest negative uh, odd integer would be negative one, and then you would have uh, negative 3, and then negative 5, and then negative 7. So these are odd, they're negative, and they're the largest negative odd integers you can get. These four consecutive integers add up to 0. Okay, well, we need to have five numbers that are in order that add up to 0. So if we have all positives and all negatives, we're not going to add up to 0. So we need those positives and negatives to cancel. So we'll start out with 0, and then we will add, have 1 here, and then negative 1 here, 2 here, and negative 2 here, and there you go, right? The negative 2 will cancel the 2, the negative 1, the 1, and then of course we're left here with 0, and it'll all add up to 0. What are the values of the red arrow? So here we want to interpolate uh, basically what the tick marks mean uh, in these cases. So let's look at this first one. Here we have 5 all the way to 17 with 3 ticks in between. Now what I like to do is I like to describe them as jumps, and we want to figure out how many jumps does it take to get from one end to the other. So in this case it's 1, 2, 3, four jumps, and what is the distance we have to traverse over that? Well, it's 5 minus 12, which, sorry, 5 minus 17, which is 12. So if there's four jumps, and over those four jumps we have to move 12 units, each jump is going to have to be 12 divided by 4, or 3 units. So this will be 8, this will be 11, this will be 14, and then it works out, this becomes 17. So what is our answer? Well, our answer here, what they're looking for is 8. For this one, we have to do interpolation, but it's with decimals. So where are we? Well, we're between 0 and negative 1, so we're negative, and we're getting larger as we go this way. So this is going to have to be, uh, this is divided into four pieces, so this is going to be quarters, which means this is negative, I'll put it down here, negative 0.75. Now be careful, it's not negative 0.25, that would be going this way. We're getting larger as we go to the right, so in this case we've got to go the absolute value of this, right, 1 has got to go down to 0.75. So in this case, we're going from negative 1 to negative 0.75. Number 6, the square root, the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is just 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of x squared, well, the square root and the square kind of cancel each other out, right? They're inverse uh, operations. So in some sense, you're getting rid of them. So if you're square rooting a square, you get what you started with, in this case, x. Simplify the fraction. Well, let's do it the long way. Let's break this into its factors. Well, 54 is 9 times 6, and 72 is 9 times 8. So we can go ahead and cancel out the 9s. So we're left with 6 over 8, but that can be broken down into 3 times 2 to 4 times 2. We get rid of those, and we're finally left in the end with 3 fourths. Perform the following operations. Now, in these problems, you can do them with your calculator, but remember in the instructions I kind of advised you not to use your calculator unless you really need to. And this is especially true of these problems. I want to make sure that you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions without a calculator, just because that gives us an idea that you know the basic properties of fractions and how they work, which is an important skill for when you're trying to figure out what the answers to particular questions are. 
So let's see here, four fifths plus two thirds. Well, I'm adding them, so I gotta make the denominators the same. So this least common denominator will be 15, so let's multiply this guy by three over three, this guy by five over five. So we're gonna get 12 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths, which now we add the numerator. Oops. Uh, 12 plus 10 is 22, and then 15 on the bottom is what's left for the denominator. So our answer to this one will be 22 fifteenths. Same thing for this one, right? So in this case, we're subtracting. So we're going to get 12 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths. So this should be 2 fifteenths. Now, when you're multiplying, all you do, you don't have to worry about the denominators being the same. You actually just multiply across. So this is simply enough, 8 over 15. And here, when we're dividing, it's pretty much the same thing as multiplying, but first what we want to do is we want to, if we divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we'll make this a multiply, and then we'll flip this. We'll make this 3 and this 2. We'll flip that fraction over. 4 times 3 is 12. 5 times 2 is 10, which then reduces down to 6 fifths. So those are the answers to number 8. What is the reciprocal of negative 17 over 13? Well, the reciprocal, just like we saw in the last problem, just means flip the uh, fraction. So this becomes negative 13 seventeenths. Put these decimals in order from least to greatest. So be careful here. We need the least first, so that's going to be the most negative. So which one of these is the most negative? Well, these have nines in them, but you always got to mind the place those nines are in. These are in the tenths or the hundredths and thousandths place. Here, we've got negative 0.4 tenths. So actually, we're going to put that, or negative 0.4. That's going to be our smallest number because it's the most negative. Next, well, we've got nines here, but this nine is in the hundredths place, while this nine is in the tenth, is in the thousandths place. Oh, this is actually positive, never mind. Uh, this is the negative one. Well, this one is in the, uh, this nine is in the hundredths place. This is in the, I guess, ten thousandths place. So this is smaller than this, but this since 0 0.09 is negative, or is, is, yeah, this 0 0.09 is negative, because this 0 0.09 is larger, this is actually smaller. So this becomes negative 0.09. This is our last negative, and it's the closest to zero, so that makes sense. Now for the other side, positives, well we have 0 0.32, 0 0.033, and 0 0.0099. Even though this has nines in it, this nine is in the thousandths place, where this is in the hundredths place, so this is actually smaller, even though it's got nine, so this comes next. And then this guy, 0 0.033. And then finally the one with the uh, tenths place, 0 0.32. So that should be your order, and that's numbers one to 10.